come home, take two. <laughs> Messed up the first video, so got to do it again. I try to do things in one take, but sometimes my mind just does not cooperate. This is Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long to belong. We also want to bring the body of Christ discipleship tools across multiple platforms to develop disciples for the second coming of Christ. We believe that God wants a rapture-ready body of believers to be snatched up and and, uh, ready to spend eternity with Him. And we'd like to develop those believers with this digital platform. Uh, We want to talk about coming home. And uh, really, I want to read the nightlight, which is out of John chapter 12. It says in verse 30, Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. It was a voice from God the Father in heaven glorifying his son Jesus, uh, the transfiguration. Verse 31, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I believe judgment is coming soon. I believe that we're rapidly approaching the end of time. Here's the come home verse, though. Here's the nightlight for you. Verse 32, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Now, that's to the story that I was trying to tell earlier, but I got confused in my brain. There was a mama named named Maria. Maria had a little girl named Christina. Christina grew up in a they grew up in a very poor community it was a they lived in a one room house with a dirt floor red tile roof um and the father of the family had died when Christina was young and you know it's it's tough you go through the the teenage years and you kind of hit some of the rebellion and she everything was fine mom had got a job and was working and providing food for the family but there was no extras or luxuries in fact there was just two pallets that were on the floor that they slept on and a stove in between and that was the furnishings of the house but there was food and there was happiness and but the teenage years came as they always do and rebellion kind of set in in Christina's heart and she she started wanting life beyond a little village and she was a beauty a, a stunning young woman uh, and she had no lack of suitors there in the little village but they were were not what she was after so she kept them all at arm's length she had the ability just to be in her presence made a man feel like a king Max Lucado said and somehow she just had that magnetism that, that some women have and just uh, but she kept the the guys in the village at arm's length. She never let them get close to her. And uh, she kept talking about she wanted to move to the big city. And uh, and uh, her mom Maria said, "No, you can't. You can't go to the big city. There's no jobs there. What would you do?" Now Maria knew what Christina would have to do if she went to the big city. There was really only one way that she would be able to earn uh, a living. She'd be able to feed herself, and she just dreaded even the thought of that but she couldn't get her 15-year-old girl to understand what was going on. So she, uh, but in the next morning, she got up and her, her daughter's bed was empty. There was nobody in it. And she had run away to the big city in, in Brazil. Well, her mother panicked and, and got all of the cash that she could get together, threw some clothes in a bag, and started to get ready to go to the big city. But she had one stop she wanted to do first, and she found a, in a small community there there was a little photo booth and she went in and she spent a big amount of money that she had taking pictures of herself and picture after picture after picture as much as she could with the money that she had and she went to the city and she went to, she knew that her daughter would not be able to earn a living there and so she went to the kind of places where she thought her daughter might frequent and she would tape a picture of herself to a mirror or to a bulletin board or on a, on a post or somewhere that was very visible in the hopes that her daughter would see her visage and be moved to come home. Finally, she ran out of money. She ran out of pictures. She had uh, printed up hundreds of them and passed, and passed them out, handed them out, put them up. Finally, she had to go back to the village. Well, sometime later, Christina comes down the stairs in this seedy kind of a hotel, and she's been doing what she shouldn't have been doing 
And when she comes down, there's no light dancing in her eyes. There's no smile on her lips. There's merely the sadness of somebody that's been drugged through the muck and mire of the world. And, and she's been sleeping in a different bed almost every night. And she's longing for that little pallet and that little dirt floor and that little red tiled roof. And she comes down to the bottom of the stairs and she sees there a, a sight that just blows her away. It's a little picture of her mother. And she picks it up and it says on the back, it doesn't matter what you've done. It, it doesn't matter where you are. Come home, all is forgiven. Well, we need to understand that God has the ability to forgive us. And he wants us to come home to him. And he doesn't put up a picture. Instead, what he does is he puts up a cross. And the cross of Christ where Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. That means that as we look at the cross of Christ, we see a sacrifice that was made on our behalf to take us home. That's a powerful thing, because I'm afraid a lot of us have been running. It's very easy to run from God. It's very easy to go the wrong direction and to head down the wrong lifestyle, make the wrong choices. And then sometimes after you've been running the, living the wrong life and headed in the wrong direction for long enough of a time, you get the feeling that maybe, maybe God doesn't care anymore. Maybe. Maybe God is tired of uh, trying to get you to come home. Maybe God's given up on you. I want you to know that God has not given up on you. God looks for your return home like this mother looked for the return of her daughter. And her daughter came home and was reunited with their mother. And the prodigal son in, in Luke chapter 15, he's been off in a far country. And he came to the end of himself. He came to the end of the party. He came to the end of the money. He came to the end of his friends. And finally, it says he came to himself. And then he, he said, man, my father's got servants that are doing better than I am. I'm gonna, I've sinned against heaven and against my father, and I'm going to go home, and I'm going to make this right. And he gets up, and he goes home, and he's ready to say his, his repentance to his father. But his father runs to meet him and throws his arms around his son, commands the servants to put a robe on him, uh, commands the servants to put a ring on his finger, shoes on his feet, kill the fatted calf and strike up the band because we're going to have a party because my son which was dead is alive again. I want you to know God the Father wants you to come home. I don't know where you've been and I don't know what you've done but I know that it doesn't matter and here's why it doesn't matter. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. It says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's an amazing truth. God wants to, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and, and sup with him and he with me. God wants to have fellowship with you again. God wants to restore the broken relationship. And he's essentially put the picture of his son all around the planet so that you could see and remember the price that was paid to call you home. When I was a kid, I always remember when it'd get dark and it'd get scary, I'd listen, I'd hear my mom whistle. She could whistle so loud it'd go a mile, man. And we'd, we'd all come tumbling in out of the darkness and there'd be a, a, a bright light on in the house and a warm stove waiting for us when it got cold outside. And my mom would read us a story out of some book that she was reading. It's where I developed my love of reading. And I was home. And it was one of the most comforting times in my life. I want you to have that kind of comfort with God. God the Father is whistling you home. Come home. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I just pray that you'd be with these. Lord, we are all sinners. We're, we're all the Christinas of the world. We, we've gone the wrong way, done the wrong things, been with the wrong crowd, said the wrong things. God, we're wicked. And we come before you asking you to forgive us and wash us and make us clean, God. We know that apart from you, not a one of us would be able to stand before you, the Holy Father in heaven. And I just pray that you would just uh, be with these, allow them to feel the call home. God, some are so tired and, and they're so, God, the light's gone out of their eyes, the smile's away from their lips, God. All they do is cry now. God, I'm asking that you move in their lives and draw them home to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. I love you guys. Remember, come home to God. Come home, come home, come home.